This is the day the Lord hath made. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad in it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I look at that and I say, you know, people go, well, you know, uh, God didn't make me rejoice. No, no, I choose to rejoice. I choose to be glad in it because my mind is on Jesus Christ and the beautiful things that Amen. he has in store for me this day. Well, talk about one of the most beautiful things that he gave me was my doll, Wendy Lynn. Oh, Whoa, mercy, I'm honey. so glad she's on this program. <laughs> but most of all, that her last name is Adams. You know my, what that means? Yeah, I know. Mine. That means I am your wife. <laughs> Whoa, I got that. <laughs> I get that wife. <laughs> Wendy, share with us. You know what, David? Uh, I was praying, coming down here and then out in the hall when we were waiting. And the Lord shared with me that we're praising, okay? This year is the year of praise. Yes, we right? praise. This is what he shared Jesus. with me. I have been, uh, for the past uh, week and a half, almost two weeks, been preparing for this because he shared with me some good things that is going to happen this year. And it all starts out with praise. So... In Psalms 47, 1, 6 through 7, it says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, <laughs> about unto God. It says, you know, the word to, with a voice with triumph. Yes, we're not shouted, meek. he says. Yeah, not, <laughs> we're not supposed to be meek. He <laughs> says, he said, and he says, he says, and sing. Ooh. He said, sing praises to God. Sing praises, sing praises unto our king. Sing praises, for God is the king mm -hmm. of all earth. King, king. And it says, sing ye praises with understanding. It says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Oh, yes. It says, in the city of our God. Mm -hmm. In the morn, it says, and in holiness. We are supposed to praise him with everything. That's with right. everything, with breath, praise the Lord. And this is what God has shared with me within the last couple of weeks, that praising, you know, we've got a lot to praise him for. Mm -hmm. We wake up every morning. We can breathe. I don't have a problem breathing. I don't have a problem at all. I, and, and if I do get sick, guess what? I have a healer. That's right. Amen. And that healer is my God, my Lord. Yes. He said he will heal me, and he does. Well, just like Wendy said, we're supposed to praise him with a life of holiness because he is our Lord. Amen. He's our Lord of our lives. So all of the garbage stays out of our lives when we make him Lord, we follow his plan, his principles for abundant living. That's one of the theme verses of Precious Promises with David and Wendy Lynn. Amen. John 10, 10, I'm come that you might I have, have life and have it more abundantly. Oh, more abundant. I like that more abundant life. Yes. I'm going to keep living that. Amen. Because I keep the garbage out. And just like Wendy just shared, when you live a life of righteousness and holiness in him, it's for your benefit. Glory. It's not God's. I mean, he's got all the heaven, the angels, and billions of people and all of that. But you get the benefits when you live by his principles Amen. that way. 
Amen. Well, we have a very special guest today that uh, God has used of miracles and using her in different ministries too. And we have known her for quite some time in the uh, doors that God's opened up to us in Hollywood, things like that. We've got to share New Year's. Amen. Sitting right next to Marnie. This is Marnie Lynn. Marnie, welcome to Precious Promises. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. Well, praise God. Tell us a little about the miracles that have happened in your life. The miracles are absolutely amazing that have happened in my life. Um, I was a top Hollywood stunt girl for many, many years. And one day driving home, I had a horrific car accident where a truck came through the driver door of my window Ooh. and took half the car off. Mm. And I somehow fit, I was real little back then, and I somehow fit in the gear shift. I had my seatbelt on and it's, I'm lucky I'm alive. They broadside hits like that, but I was very strong because I was such a champion athlete. And um, a few years after the car accident, first it took a year in neck and pelvic traction. I didn't leave a bed, my neck. Uh, it took a year to walk again at a national gymnast. It took me a, a year to hang laundry. My arms were on the steering wheel when I looked over and said, oh my God, he's gonna hit me. And those are the words that came out of my mouth. Oh my God, he's gonna hit me. Now, I had never been in a church in my entire life mm. when I had the car accident. And, um, I still wasn't thinking of God, but those words came out of my mouth and I felt power in the car as I was hit. Uh, it was amazing and I always believed that because I screamed, God, oh my God, he's gonna hit me, that God was there, an angel, somebody. Well, I got on my feet and uh, the t tissue and muscle and nerve was ripped completely off the left side of the body and hanging by threads. And some of the tissues started to regrow near the bladder in the abdomen. And I was still working. I was an aspiring actress, and my career was through the roof. And I did a murder she wrote, and I, had, I was doubling Linda Hamilton. I went back to hit a tennis ball, and I was supposed to fall on the tennis court. Well, I ruptured internally. Now, Ooh. nobody on the set knew that that had happened, but I called my doctor immediately. I was rushed in, and now this tissue had grown in these massive tumors inside my abdomen and pelvis. I underwent... Um, 10 more years of severe open stomach abdominal operations where they removed 19 tumors and cysts. I fought for my life every single day. I lived in heights of screaming pain in the doorway. I couldn't walk, sit or stand, cross the floor. And in 1999, um, UCLA doctors said they could not perform the final surgery. I now had become the woman at the well. I was gushing blood every single day. Sure, I would die any minute. Never thought I'd get back on my feet to perform or sing or do anything ever again. And um, a man had told me, a very dear friend, that Jesus Christ was the only person that could heal. So I, I came home from the hospital in 1999. A doctor, a private doctor, Dr. Marvin Schwartz, he said, he will do the uh, final operation to stop the bleeding and save my life. I got home from the hospital. I took a few steps, and I had to take a taxi home from the hospital. My stomach was full of staples. I, I didn't want to bother anyone. I'm, I'm in another surgery. So I took a taxi home in a little robe and staples in my stomach. I walked in. I thought I was on my last breath. I was sure that I was on my last breath. I fell to the floor and I was, I was frozen there on the floor, and all of a sudden I just started praying, Thank please, you, Lord. please, Jesus, Jesus, please, I don't wanna die. Please, Jesus, I hear you though. And, and as I fell on the floor, now keep in mind that there was, they just overcome the major operation, the final major operation, and sandals appeared before me. I was kissing <laughs> the ground. Amen, amen. I didn't know that the holiest place on ground was Jesus' feet. I didn't know that till later. I, I was 44. I'd never been in a church my entire life. My dad, he didn't believe in church. He said God was in his beer can. 
Oh, man. So, Jesus. Um, what a bondage. Yeah, never knew, and just prayed at that minute. Well, then I kind of looked up, and I saw just a hand come out, and I'm not the only one. Other people close to death have had these similar experiences. Amen. Jesus Christ is alive. He lives. He heals. Now, people yes, he said, does. Yes, yeah. People said, no, it isn't Jesus. It's an angel. I don't care who it was. All I know is that from the day I kissed the sandals that appeared and the day the hand reached out and touched me, that I was started to get better, started to get stronger. It took many more years. And today I'm a walking um, testament of healing and faith. Um, but you know, it's okay if that was an angel that day. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know. So I got myself to church. I went through baptism studies, um, and I was baptized December 12th of 1999. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Holy baptism, the most greatest day of my entire life. And my mom, it just so happened, she had a breakdown during all of this and all of these operations. And she was homeless for nearly nine years. Within days of my holy baptism, I received a call that a KP Deswayne had been found. My brother says, oh, mm. she, that's not her name. My mom's name was Ruby Marie Ferris Fields. Ruby was found within days of my holy baptism. She'd been in the lost last, how many years? Yeah, after nine years. Nine almost, years. Nine my, years Your of mom was lost. And oh my. a minister that I explained it to, he says, well, the, the, um, one of the promises of baptism is that your family will be reunited. And so Ruby came home. She was very ill, lots of cancers. And I cared for her for 13 years mm -hmm. until she died in 2012. And so I'm... Oh. You find Jesus Christ your Savior, you get healed, and the power yes. of God that's going on there. And your mom, that is a, that, that is a miracle there, oh. you know, that really is, because Amazing. of all those years. Yeah. Now, I understand uh, you're writing a book. What's that? You're writing a book. Oh, yes, yes, I'm writing a book. Um, but my book, uh, this is in, it's in my book, of course, because it's my true story. It's um, titled Cartwheels and Halos, A True Marnie and Lim Field Story, because I had this amazing career in film as a SAG talent for many, many years. And I did some of the most difficult uh, pioneer stunt women stuff that anybody ever did. I've gone on, to, I continue to act, and I've gone on to become a singer-songwriter like Wendy and script writer. Um, but the beginning of the story started with my gymnastics, and I'm, I'm actually the girl that Clint Eastwood punched off the moving train in the gauntlet. I did Whoa. that. <laughs> <laughs> and you survived. <laughs> I survived that. Yeah, I survived all of those. And I'm writing the book with um, my, I'm recently engaged to Australian author and film historian um, John Harrison. and. I met him in August, and he did an article on my life, and we hit it off. And he's my co-author on the book, and we are I'm newly engaged to him. Praise right. God. Well, the, the reference that you had there to, like, the woman the uh, well. that came to Jesus and said, If I can only touch, touch the, the hand of his garment of down garment. by his feet, Amen. I will be made whole. And that's the faith that it takes, not just, oh, Lord, heal me, heal me, heal me. No, set a point of contact. At this moment, I'm going to be healed. That's where my faith is released with God, with anybody else that's praying for you. She had the issue of blood, just like Marnine had, uh, with gushing the blood, things like that. That moment, we're healed. Praise God. The miracles that we've seen in our ministry there, too, especially how God's been using Wendy on that. Wendy, you have a song yes, that I you'd do. like to share with us. And this song is one of mine that I have written. And it's, you know what, it's, the, the theme of what happened is I was in church, and this man comes up to me, and he says, Wendy, you write beautiful songs. He says, why can't you write one about the Holy Spirit? And I said, I can. And so I went home, and I got Holy Spirit. Okay, and we get to enjoy it. Oh, 
Holy Spirit, living water springing up within my soul. Fill my cup and run it over. Give me joy I've never known. People ask me what has happened to that girl that they once knew. I just tell them that Jesus loves them. There's no end what God can do. Holy Spirit, living water springing up within my soul. Fill my cup and run it over. Give me joy I've never known. When they ask me what is the reason I feel God's Spirit take control. And that strength I feel like Samson, and that water starts to flow. Holy Spirit, living water springing up within my soul. Fill my cup and run it over. Give me joy I've never known. Just a cup of living water from that well that comes within. Holy Spirit, living water springing up within my soul. Fill my cup and run it over. Give me joy I've never known. Give me joy I've never known. Give me joy, I've never known. Amen, amen. Beautiful. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Wonderful. He's the comforter that comes as a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He lives within our hearts. I don't have to call the Holy Spirit down from heaven or take him travel time to get there. <laughs> you know, he it goes right with us. He's here all the time, isn't he? And he's there with the joy, the peace, the guidance, the direction, but only as we allow him to do that. So we're here to talk about the relationship that you have with the Godhead. I mean, there's religions all over the world, and I'll tell you straight out, there's not one religion in this world that's going to get you to God. That's right. Or get you holy. No. There's not one minister that's going to get your sins forgiven. No. That's all Jesus Christ. It's the blood of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. that can cleanse sins, Hallelujah. and that's the only thing that can cover sins. Amen. So if you're depending on somebody else, or a religion, or a denomination, or a priest, or a minister, or whatever, you're going the wrong direction. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father any other way but by me, John 14, 6. And so put your faith, your love, your life in Jesus Christ where you get to live your life walking, talking, and fellowshipping Amen. with the King of Kings, the Lord of Amen. Lords. Some people say, well, I got to be with a king so-and-so. Wendy was a good friend of, of the guy they called the king, Elvis Presley. <laughs> but that didn't even come close to the King of Kings and no, the Lord of Lords, you know, and he don't die. <laughs> no, he died once no, and for all for your sins no. to take them and stuff them at the devil and say, you know, this is my child and we're going to live in righteousness. And you know what, David? We can't go to a grave and say this is where Jesus is. <laughs> we can't do that. Uh, Muhammad has a grave. Yes. Uh, 
Buddha. Buddha has a grave. <laughs> yeah. But praise God, my Lord don't. Oh, I like He's going. alive and well. It's where it was, and the, the stones rolled away, and you go in. <laughs> There's nobody in here. Hey. Glory. With nobody in here showing that he uh, was resurrected from the dead, not only to come back and live in the world, but to come and live in your life and now so that we can live with him throughout all of eternity. That's Marie, the glory. if thing. somebody wants to contact you, how can they? Um, I'm not really available to be contacted personally on a personal basis like that. Okay. Um, they can look at my um, film background on IMDb under Marneen, M-A-R-N-E-E-N. -E -E the last name is Fields, F-I-E-L-D-S. And I'm on uh, Facebook. There you go. That's where we met. And... Um, they can like the book page, Cartwheels and Halos, the true Marnie Lynn Field story. And then I also have, I've started a healing ministry, and I have a magazine um, that'll be launching this spring, and they can like the group page, which is Share Your Story of God's Miraculous <laughs> Healing Powers. And that's on Facebook, and we're actually reading stories. I'm, uh, I, am Heavenly Waterfall Song Publishing and Productions. Now, Heavenly Waterfall did not come about from my great, amazing experience. I take no credit. Um, Heavenly Waterfall is my name. Marnin uh, means heavenly, and Lynn means waterfall. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can like those pages. Now, on the IMDb, there is an email if somebody really wants to reach me. But I wanted to ask you both. Do you feel that was Jesus? I always believed it was Jesus until someone said, he doesn't visit that way, it was an angel. No. <laughs> Jesus uh, is there with us uh, all places. He He's is there. the ruler of the universe. Now, you know, Satan got control of some of the world here, but he's still under the thumb of, say, uh, of Jesus. And uh, Jesus is every place. If you call Thank upon you. him, he will be there to answer you. He will be there to reveal himself to you. And he does it in thousands and thousands of ways. Sometimes we go, oh, well, we meet God because we went to church, because yeah. we were kneeling beside our bed. Okay, those are great places to meet Jesus Christ. And don't forsake the assembling yourself together with, right. with other believers of like precious faith, especially as you see the last days come. So it's very important there. But, you know, God called me into the ministry on October the 7th, as I was writing my newspaper route. I mean, I was just singing away, <laughs> rejoicing the Lord. I mean, he met me on my bicycle. <laughs> uh, and that's the greatest place. If it would have been a church, I'd probably go, oh, well, you know, just the emotional thing or whatever. But God meets us at the, any place where you're at, when your heart is open to him. And he'll use whatever. He uses other people. He uses angels. He uses sometimes unchristians, non-Christians to do that too. So praise God, wherever you're at, you can call upon him. And I don't have to bring him from a long ways away or wait for him or beg for him to be there. He'll be there the moment your heart is open to him. And he calls upon him. Wendy, you have a ministry that you're feeling yeah, that God's right doing now, something? I need to say something to Marlene. Okay. Marlene, number one, you said was that Jesus. Jesus Yes, Marlene. You called his name. Right. I you did not call an angel. Right. So that is what he's sharing with me. Lord, we just come to you right now. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you are the one that gives the word, that tells us what we should say and what we should do. Father God, we just ask you right now to touch every soul right now that is needing you. We just ask you right now, Reuben, I hear what you are going through. Your wife will return to you. Thank you, Lord. But you have to do the main thing. You know what it is. You know what you've done. So you have to go to her and ask her to forgive you. 
And she will. But you've got to prove to her that it won't happen again. So Reuben, it's in your court. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lester, oh my goodness. <laughs> Lester, God's going to use you in some mighty ways. I know you're only seven years old right now. <laughs> but I feel it and I see it. Mm, you are going to be a wonderful, wonderful man of God. <laughs> you're going to preach that gospel, but you're going Thank to you preach Lord. it all over. You're not going to be just preaching it in a church. No, you're going to go all over. And I just thank God that he can reveal these things to me. Yes, thank you, Lord. For and Lord, word of knowledge. there's Sharon out there. Sharon, you will find peace. Thank you. You will have the ultimate healing. God is going to give that to you. <laughs> so just praise him and thank him for every breath you take. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bible says a verse that carried me all through Bible college, Matthew 6.33. Somebody quoted it as we walked in the door of the studio today. But seek first, you seek first, ye, yeah. seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what, uh, what's going to happen? All, all these things, things will be, be added unto you. you. That's your promise from God for the rest of your life. God bless you. We love you. OCN loves you. Jesus loves you. Walk with him in your heart. See you next time. OCN is there to help you. On God's word, we truly stand. OCN is there to help you. On God's word, we truly stand. Working always together. We're holding up each other's hands. OCN. Master Plan.